With a primary mirror measuring 6.6 .6 meters across, made from 18 gold-coated segments, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is a beautiful instrument in its own right. But, stunning as this technological marvel might be, it's nothing compared to the remarkable data it has unearthed over the past time. A year since it began science operations, the Webb Telescope has transformed our understanding of the universe. From stars on the cusp of going supernova, cosmic tarantulas and record-breaking space smoke, the James Webb Space Telescope has spotted many amazing sights in the distant cosmos, revealing a groundbreaking new view of our cosmos. That's a view we have never seen before. Now, in the awe-inspiring opening discoveries for the second year of scientific observations, the titan in the world of astronomy has just captured its stunning first official image of Saturn, the famous ringed planet of our solar system. Notably, it's not a familiar view of Saturn by any stretch of the imagination. The picture goes beyond our wildest dreams, showing off Saturn's beautiful rings in a new light. Join us today as we dig deep into the first image of Saturn by JWST in detail. It would be little surprise if people with only a passing interest in astronomy thought NASA's latest eye in the sky were called the 10 billion US dollar space telescope. So much focus is placed on the cost of the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, or simply Webb for short, so little on the return on investment we will enjoy. But scientists claim that Webb is almost guaranteed to reimburse humanity by transforming our understanding of the cosmos and our place within it. And it's not a flex. It's true. The instruments with outstanding features like never before allows James Webb to make discoveries revealing completely unexpected aspects of our universe that nobody could have predicted. To understand this better, we only need to look to its immediate forerunner, the Hubble Space Telescope. In over 30 years of service, the Hubble Space Telescope has revolutionized astronomy. For instance, its images of high redshift supernova were pivotal in demonstrating that remote supernova are fainter and therefore more distant than expected. In 1998, this finding contributed to the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics recipients Adam Rees and Brian Schmidt and Saul Perlmutter independently, concluding that the universe's expansion was not happening at a fixed velocity or slowing down, but was actually accelerating. And this acceleration represents the first direct evidence of dark energy, a form of energy and pressure expanding space everywhere. Another seminal breakthrough came in 1995 when Bob Williams, then director of the Space Telescope Science Institute, which runs Hubble operations, devoted most of his allotted time on the Space Telescope to staring at a seemingly dark and empty spot of space for 10 straight days. The resulting Hubble deep field image was far from empty. Like a core sample of the cosmos, it was splattered with thousands of galaxies at all ages and stages of development. This image proved to be the final nail in the coffin for the once popular steady state theory of the universe, showing that the cosmos is not immutable and has in fact changed radically over time. Further deep field images have been taken since, pushing Hubble to the absolute limit of its capabilities to return blurry smudges of light from primitive galaxies as far back as 500 million years after the Big Bang. But to finally understand how the universe went from a dark, gaseous fog of basic elements to the clear, transparent cosmos littered with light we see today, we need to peer even further back in time to the first light 
when the earliest generations of stars formed in the universe. And for that, we need Webb. The Trailblazing Telescope, JWST, is a gold-plated, yes, $10 billion machine stuffed with infrared detectors accented with high-tech lenses and programmed with ultra-powerful software. And its holy grail device is called the Near Infrared Camera, or NearCam, and will lead the charge by collecting a wealth of deep space infrared signals for astronomers to view on the ground. This is why the JWST is often said to hold the promise of unveiling an unfiltered universe. Looking through the JWST lens instead of a standard optical telescope would be like looking up at the stars from my hypothetical New York dark zone instead of Times Square. There'd be a myriad more sparkles in both cases, even though you're viewing the same sky. It's just that in our shadowy dark zone analogy, we're viewing extra stars because we're uninhibited by light pollution. The JWST, on the other hand, is collecting deep space infrared light and decoding it for us. It will point at the exact same universe that the Hubble has scrutinized for decades and scientists have studied for ages, but it will access luminescence we cannot see, possibly revealing concealed space-borne phenomena like violent black holes, exotic exoplanets, grand spiral galaxies, and maybe even signals of alien life. Its first images have already taken much more than our breath away. In fact, NASA personnel, who were the first to lay eyes on the JWST's first light images, said they were moved to tears. What I have seen moved me as a scientist, as an engineer, and as a human being, NASA's deputy administrator said. Only one month after the first images were released, the successor to the Hubble telescope revealed new insights on how stars form, galaxies merge, and the early period of the universe. The images are quite literally a sight to behold, showing the cosmos in awe-inspiring detail. The discoveries have grown significantly since then, giving scientists a vast treasure trove of data to sift through. According to the Space Telescope Science Institute, to date, there are more than 750 scientific publications that contain significant amounts of content from the James Webb Space Telescope. Astronomers will be peering through the data for decades, while the observatory continues its journey to discover the mysteries of the cosmos. At that time, having said that James Webb, along with its advanced tools of this space observatory, truly lets us see further into space than ever before, unlocking new insights into how the universe works. The images can be so in-depth that the results have been described as a new age of astronomy. Amazingly, after ending cycle one, the first massively successful years peering across the universe, the time machine James Webb continues to rewrite the textbooks of science. And in the first stunning discoveries of cycle two, the second years into space operations, the titan in the world of astronomy, James Webb Space Telescope, has recently given us the first official amazing image of Saturn, the famous ringed planet of our solar system. Interestingly, the picture goes beyond our wildest dreams, showing off the beauty of Saturn and its rings in a whole new light. With this new view of the iconic planet, the telescope has now taken images of all four of the solar system's gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. In the new picture from the telescope's near-cam, or again near-infrared camera, four of Saturn's rings shine brightly, with the planet itself appearing dimmer. Three of its moons can be seen as pinpricks of light on the left side. Webb's capture of Saturn appears starkly different from past images of the planet. Gone are the gas giant's recognizable bands, and in their place is a darker-looking orb encircled by rings. It's not a familiar view of Saturn by any stretch of the imagination, 
said Lee Fletcher, a planetary scientist at the University of Leicester in England, who shared the news with new scientists Alex Wilkins. That's because at the infrared wavelengths observed by NIRCAM, methane gas absorbs most of the sunlight hitting the planet's atmosphere, according to a NASA blog post. While this effect makes the planet look dark, its icy rings appear to shine, reflecting plenty of light that the telescope can detect. Visible in the image are Saturn's A, B, C, and F rings. The planet has seven rings in total, named alphabetically in the order they were discovered. Each ring comprises chunks of rock and ice from bodies like comets and asteroids broken apart by the planet's gravity. Some pieces are smaller than a grain of sand, while others are the size of a house. A few even rival Earth's mountains in size. Between the A and B rings lies the Cassina Division, a 2,920-mile gap shown in the NIRCAM image. The ankle gap in Saturn's A ring, also seen in the image, is where the moon Pan resides. Research published earlier this year suggests that Saturn's rings are much younger than the planet itself. The moons, seen to the left of Saturn, are Dione, Tethys, and Enceladus. Astronomers think that Enceladus is a strong candidate for supporting life. After research published last month detected phosphorus in data collected by the Cassini spacecraft, scientists have since found all six elements essential to life as we know it in the material from Enceladus's ocean. In a recent important discovery, Webb spotted a giant plume of water vapor spewing 6,000 miles out from Enceladus's ocean and feeding Saturn's E-ring. Webb's new photo was part of a series of deeply exposed images that scientists hope will reveal more about Saturn, including insights into its fainter G and E rings. We look forward to digging into the deep exposures to see what discoveries may await, Matthew Tiscareno, a senior research scientist at the SETI Institute, who led the process of designing the telescope's observation of Saturn, said in a statement. Additionally, Researchers hope Webb can spot more moons around the gas giant, per NASA's blog post. Saturn has the most known moons in the solar system by far. The discovery of 62 moons earlier this year brought its total to 145, clinching the planet's spot at the top of the solar system's moon race. Jupiter, by the way, is the runner-up and has 95 known moons. From its orbit around the second Lagrange point, a spot roughly one million miles from Earth in the direction opposite the Sun, Webb can't observe the planet's interior to its orbit. So with Earth, Venus and Mercury off-limits for that reason, Saturn represents the last of the telescope's planetary targets in our solar system to be imaged by the NIRCAM. The telescope gazed at Jupiter last summer and subsequently captured images showcasing Neptune's rings and moons, Mars's cratered surface, and Uranus's rings. Notably, in recent observation, Webb Telescope makes a pair of intriguing discoveries about Jupiter's moons. Ganymede and Io are one half of the Galilean moons, discovered by Galileo Galilei in the 17th century. They're quite different from one another, Ganymede is icy, and Io is volcanic, but both are on the receiving end of Jupiter's mighty influence. First, let's find out what did James Webb find on Ganymede. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, has a magnetic field, something many other moons and even some planets lack. Worlds with magnetic fields, like Earth for instance, direct charged particles in space along the field's lines towards the poles. The end of this journey produces auroras. In the case of Ganymede, something else happens too. There's a breakdown of its water ice molecules. The giveaway was the telescope's detection of hydrogen peroxide at the Ganymede poles. JWST revealing the presence of hydrogen peroxide at Ganymede's poles 
shows for the first time that charged particles funneled along Ganymede's magnetic field are preferentially altering the surface chemistry of its polar caps, according to Samantha Trumbo, lead researcher on the Ganymede paper and 51 Pegasus B postdoctoral fellow at Cornell University said. Trumbo gave comments in a statement published Thursday describing the Jovian science. Hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2, is a water molecule with an extra oxygen atom. It forms at Ganymede's poles after Jupiter sprays highly charged particles into space. When they bombard Ganymede, the Moon's magnetic field directs them to the northern and southern poles. There, the Jovian particles slam into the polar ice and break apart its ice molecules. When some of it recombines, hydrogen peroxide forms. This is called water radiolysis. Trumbo says it's likely common to icy objects throughout the solar system. We really want to understand this process, how it works, and what the primary controls are because it's so important and widespread, Trumbo tells Inverse. In the case of Europa, another Galilean moon, water radiolysis could answer questions about its habitability. Europa may host a subsurface ocean beneath an icy crust, where pressures and conditions might support microbial life. Missions like NASA's Europa Clipper will soon visit the Moon to get a handle on its intrigue. Next, what did James Webb find on Io? Well, Io isn't icy, it's volcanic. Jupiter is hefty, and as a result, it wields a powerful gravitational pull. This has a push and pull effect on Io. The result is ongoing volcanic activity, and as astronomers seek more information about these eruptions, they come across roadblocks. One was lifted recently, when astronomers found a forbidden emission line. The telescope peered into Io when the moon was in Jupiter's shadow. This isolated data from one sort of sulfur molecule and another. When sensitive telescope instrumentation detected the faint emission of one molecule in particular, sulfur monoxide, or SO, which appeared because Jupiter's shadow brought most of the obscuring molecule, sulfur dioxide, onto Io's surface, astronomers knew they had caught an eruption from a stealthy volcanic vent in the distant solar system. The only way we can explain this emission is if the sulfur monoxide is excited in the volcanic vent at a temperature of 1500 Kelvin or 2240 degrees Fahrenheit or so, and that it comes out in this excited state, loses its photon within a few seconds, and that is the emission we see, shares M. K. DePatter, co-principal investigator of the observation team that conducted this research during JWST's early release science program. De Patter, who is also the lead author of the I.O. paper, shared comments in the statement. The Galilean moons are one of the most fascinating places in the universe for modern astronomers. Whether scientists are in the hunt for extraterrestrial life, or curious about our cosmic neighborhood in its extremes, Jupiter delivers. NASA's Europa Clipper is currently in development, slated to launch in October 2024. The European Space Agency's JUICE mission, short for Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, launched in April of this year to explore the Galilean moons more in depth. According to the latest news, James Webb's focus on NGC 6822, one of our nearest galactic neighbors, may offer insights into the oldest and most distant galaxies in the universe. NGC's 6822 is full of bright stars and yellow swirls of interstellar gas in this image from JWST. This messy but gorgeous galaxy may help shed some light on what the earliest galaxies in the universe looked like, long before the first generation of stars had lived and died. Irregular galaxy NGC 6822 is just 1.5 million light-years away 
which means JWST's instruments can see the galaxy as it looked fairly recently by cosmic standards. NGC 6822 isn't a distant, extremely ancient galaxy. It's very much part of the modern, recent universe. But, like the coalescent, this galaxy is a modern throwback to a bygone era. Astronomers recently used two of JWST's instruments, the NIRCAM, or Near Infrared Camera, and the MIRI, the Mid Infrared Instrument, to study NGC 6822. In the images below, NIRCAM focuses on the slightly shorter wavelengths of infrared light emitted by the stars while MIRI captures the slightly longer mid-infrared wavelengths of interstellar gas. Combined, they offer a detailed look at the galaxy. Most of the material that makes up NGC 6822, from its dense, glittering sea of stars to its clouds of interstellar gas, is made of the two lightest elements in the universe, hydrogen and helium. Astrophysicists say that the galaxy has very low metallicity, which means that only a small proportion of its makeup is anything heavier than helium. That's important because elements heavier than helium form in the gargantuan nuclear fusion reactors in the cores of stars, which means those heavy elements only existed in the universe after the first generation of stars had lived died, and scattered a stellar lifetime's worth of heavy elements across the universe. Before that, every galaxy in the universe probably looked a lot like NGC 6822. By studying this strangely low metallicity galaxy, astronomers hope to learn more about the inner workings of galaxies in the early days of the universe, from star formation to the life cycle of interstellar dust. Nearby, NGC 6822 is our nearest galactic neighbor that's not actually orbiting the Milky Way. Other smaller galaxies, like the Large Magellanic Cloud and the Small Magellanic Cloud, are closer, but they're satellites of the Milky Way. NGC 6822, on the other hand, is a little disorganized, but definitely independent. In fact, it was the first object that astronomers realized was definitively outside the Milky Way. Before that discovery, astronomers argued fiercely over whether there was anything beyond the confines of our own galaxy, and that was only a century ago. This stunning little galaxy helped settle that debate. Imagine what we'll know about the universe in another century. Obviously, thanks to its infrared hunting instruments, the JWST's infrared detectors could show us the missing pieces of our universe's history, its beginning chapters. They could elucidate what the cosmos looked like during its first moments after the Big Bang. They could also find distant exoplanets floating among their enormous exomoons and search for faraway artificial light that may signal extraterrestrial life. They will offer us a landscape of the universe that's clear enough to remind us of our own microscopic place within it. Plus, to take everything a step further, infrared wavelengths have the added benefit of being long enough to travel through matter, including thick, enormous stardust clouds. Thus, if the JWST picks up on infrared light radiating from such a cloud, it'd be able to paint a picture of the scene within, perhaps even a scene of ancient stars being born. It is not clear how the universe transformed from a simpler state of nothing but hydrogen and helium to the universe we see today, Paul Geithner, Deputy Project Manager for JWST said. The Webb Telescope will see distant reaches of space and an epoch of time never observed before and help us answer these important questions," he said. But the most coveted aspect of the JWST is that, in addition to questions scientists have been asking for decades, it could very well even answer a few no one thought to ask. Well, that's all the information we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already 
and hit that bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content like this and to always improve. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.